Well, I'm going to look at a new subject today. How do we assess our own worth to God? Are we valuable? Are we not valuable? How do we reassess that? Now, I'm wearing glasses and you'll notice that uh, the glasses have got lenses and we need to change the lens that we use to assess this value to God and value to his kingdom. Have a look with me at 1 Samuel 2 and verse 12. It's talking about Eli. He was the prophet of the nation and he had a couple of sons. And the two sons of Eli, in verse 12, 1 Samuel 2, 12, the sons of Eli were base and worthless. Now, why were they worthless? They knew scriptures. They were trained by their father to an extent. Why were they worthless? Because they did not know the Lord. They didn't know him. So the um, estimation of their worth was based upon this simple fact of whether or not the sons of Eli knew God, knowing God. That's what I'm talking about today, knowing God. In John chapter 10, we see that Jesus used a simple uh, picture image of him being the good shepherd. And in John uh, 10 and verse uh, 7, this is what he said. He said, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. He previously said, I am the good shepherd. So he was the door of the sheep. Now picture this. When the sheep at night needed protection, the shepherd would build a simple wall in a U-shape. And he himself would lie across the entrance of the opening of, of that uh, little wall. The sheep were corralled inside the wall and he would form the door. So in other words, it was a living door. Any animal who wanted to get to the sheep and kill them and so on would have to pass through him. He said, I am the door of the sheep. And uh, in, in verse 14, he said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I'm known by my sheep. They know and recognize me. So the definition of a Christian or someone who is one of God's sheep is someone who knows the shepherd, not somebody who knows a lot of scripture and so on, but who knows the shepherd. Now we need to recalibrate our worth. Many believe that they are doing very well in their Christian life because they're blessed. I'm blessed. And I could enumerate with a long list of how I'm blessed. In the last week, I've led two people to the Lord. I've prayed with them to be born again. Even this morning, I spoke to a new person on my walk and uh, explained to her about God's love. Spent 20 minutes explaining the love of God to her. So I would say I am well blessed, but there is a difference. Does that mean that I am valuable to God or I am valuable in the kingdom of God? Really, I need to assess myself and I suggest you reassess yourself, not whether you're blessed. Be blessed. In other words, that's not, it's not the be all and end all, being blessed. Knowing God is the definition of eternal life. Now you're looking in John 17, just flip over in John's Gospel. This is Jesus's prayer. And in his prayer, which is recorded in the 17th chapter of John, this is what uh, Jesus is recorded of saying. This is eternal life to know that they may know thee, the only true God and the Christ whom you have sent. So knowing the Father and knowing Christ, that is the definition of eternal life. Now, it's not knowing scripture, it's, it's knowing Jesus, it's knowing the Father whom he has sent. And we need to think about, do we know him as a doorway? Lovely picture in, uh, uh, just flip out of John a moment, into Revelation 3.20. This is a well-known scripture. Let me just find it. Revelation 3.20. Ooh. 
fingers and thumbs. There we go. Revelation 3.20. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Now there's a picture of intimacy, eating together. Jesus knocking at the door of our heart and we opening that door to let him know us intimately. That is the standard. And uh, eternal life, that's the definition of eternal life. It's not the blessings of God, it's knowing God. Now, just a couple more verses before, this is an introductory section to knowing him. So uh, let's have a look again at John, John 14 and verse six. You know this scripture. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Now, verse seven, which is seldom quoted, if you had known me, you would have known my father. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. So Jesus there is talking to Philip and his disciples. And he's saying, if you know me, you know the father. So the criteria is knowing Christ. And uh, in rather uh, a tense exchange with the Jews in John chapter 8, Again, just our last reference today in John, John chapter 8 and uh, verse 19. Jesus uh, said that they were he was talking with the Jews and, and they, they said to him, where is your father? And Jesus said, you neither know me nor my father, because if you had known me, you should know my father also. So in his clashes with the religious Jews, and again, he comes back to the same point. Do you know me? If you knew me, you'd know my father. So the whole crux, the whole center, this is what we should be focusing on. Not the blessings of God and what he does for us. The blessings of God are wonderful, but it's not the central thing. The central thing is, do we know him? Jesus said, if you know me, you know my father also. So that's what I'm going to be considering in these next uh, few videos, knowing God intimately and going through that doorway of intimacy. That's the image to keep in, in mind as we study this subject. I'll see you again, talk again about this on the next video.